so we have the Turkish media are the ones who release the video footage and then the Turkish authorities are not verifying the footage so that's also odd and it's probably because the authorities had said that there was no video um, or that it had, the camera had malfunctioned and all of that. Even with this whole situation, it seems like some people in Turkey are trying to cover something up and then others are trying to get the truth out. That's what that seems like to me. And here's another key part of this article. Sutton, a former BBC journalist, who was Iraq director for the nonprofit Institute for War and Peace Reporting was found dead in a restroom at Ataturk International Airport on Saturday after missing a connecting flight to Iraq. Turkish media reported without citing sources that Sutton became distraught that she didn't have money for a new ticket and hanged herself with shoelaces from a restroom door hook. The report said she was discovered by three Russian tourists who alerted police. It's all very weird, said Anthony Borden, the executive director of the Institute of War and Peace Reporting, a nonprofit group focused on expanding journalism in war-torn regions. How a couple hundred bucks could enter into the equation is beyond me. Borden describes Sutton as a seasoned globetrotter, a strong, confident, and fearless woman who is very familiar with world travel and the delays that come along with it. If she had run out of money, she would know to call him because she had done that in the past when other travel delays arose. Borden said she was traveling with her iPhone, credit cards, her laptop, all of which she would normally just use to book a new flight if her connection was missed. Sutton was a veteran journalist very familiar with the region. Before working for the nonprofit, Sutton held United Nations media positions, was a journalist with the BBC and had been working toward a PhD at the Australian National University. Her university webpage says her research focused on supporting women journalists in Iraq and Afghanistan. A friend who met Sutton about four years ago when he worked with the United Nations Development Program in Iraq doubted that Sutton would even miss the flight to begin with, characterizing her as anything but confused or forgetful. I also cannot imagine her not having money to buy another ticket. I am sure she carried credit cards and not to mention had a decent and steady income over many years. Unless there is clear evidence she committed suicide, she was definitely murdered. This is quoted from Hiwa Osman, a friend of Sutton's in Iraq and a former media advisor for the Institute of War and Peace Reporting. Sutton was also bringing back toys and books for Hiwa Osman's children, and there was no indication she was unhappy, he said. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And the title of this article is, Sutton had 2,300 euros in her wallet, contrary to suicide motives allegations. I'll put the link below in the description box, like I said, and it's the one called um, Sutton had 2,300 years in her wallet. So basically this is just saying that the allegation that she didn't have enough money to buy an, a second plane ticket is a flat out lie because in her wallet was 2,300 euros. She, she had plenty of money to buy a new plane ticket. And um, it just corroborates the video showing her with a shopping bag and stuff from within the airports, um, shops and stuff. She had plenty of money. And that's basically all this article is about. And the final article that I want to talk about is, this one was published in no on November 25th of 2015, about a month later after the initial reports and stuff. This is on the Sydney Morning Herald website. The title of it is What Happened to Jackie Sutton. So it really just sort of reiterates the story talking about her background, her work, all of that, how she was found dead, how it doesn't add up. And this article also has the actual CCTV footage 
of her as well. Now, the key points that I want to cover with this article is this. So there's a part here in this article where it says she also told Whitley, one of her friends, of stumbling upon corruption within a, within a UN agency that employed her in Afghanistan and of securing the release from prison of a colleague who had tried to blow the whistle on this corruption. Because of that, she was forced to leave Kabul in a hurry. So she basically had to flee. What stands out to me with this is that she was embroiled in all of this political stuff, okay? Um, and also coming across corruptions in the UN and things like that. So she probably had a lot of high-level enemies who would have wanted her silent not to mention on both sides with the UN but also with um, ISIS and the terrorist groups but her work involved her in a lot of danger once again like I said so there's another part here where it talks about once again this guy Anthony Borden which is a friend of hers is saying um, concerning the memorial service of the previous director that Sutton ended up replacing there, he's saying that the service was very intense and emotional, but ultimately uplifting. It left all everyone involved determined to carry on their murdered colleagues' work. Because once again, um, that previous director was also murdered in a car bombing. This woman was filled with a higher drive and passion and a renewed passion for her work. It makes no sense she would kill herself shortly thereafter in the, within the same year basically now here's one of the main parts of this article that i found of key interest in sutton's luggage for the return journey to iraq were books for her phd research presents for her friend osmond's children and 10 kilos of rabbit food for a rabbit she was helping to rehabilitate why would she have those things if she was planning on killing herself? You know, that doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense. She was clearly planning to get to her destination. At the Istanbul, Istanbul airport itself, where she was supposed to carry over to her next flight, she bought two bottles of wine, which she had promised her friend. So in, within the airport herself, where she allegedly killed herself, she bought two bottles of wine to give to her friend when she got to Iraq. Why would she take the time to buy those bottles of wine in the airport if she was going to kill herself in the airport? It doesn't add up. Because of the cameras, we know that Sutton headed for a cafe where she ordered a beer and drank it slowly while reading a drawn Grisham novel. After an hour, she made her way to a waiting area where she sat down and apparently fell asleep. At 12.15 a.m., when Sutton's plane left on schedule, she was still in her seat, apparently asleep. Fifteen minutes later, she walked to the departure gate and found it closed. She went to an inquiry desk where she was told her bags had been offloaded. The next plane to Erbil was in 12 hours and if she wanted to be on it, she would have to buy another ticket. This was hardly a catastrophe, Borden points out. Frankly, experienced travelers miss a flight and they pretty much feel relieved, he says. Okay, I'm going to a hotel. IWPR would have paid the airfare and what difference does it make if you get to Erbil a bit later? It doesn't make a damn bit of difference. That's another thing that's interesting. Her work would have paid for her air ticket. So what is with this claim that she didn't have enough money to buy another ticket? It does not make sense. Not only was she found with 2,300 euros in her wallet, but her company would have bought the ticket anyway. Another friend of hers, Sebastian Kleech, says, the Jackie I know would have either taken the opportunity to have a night out in Istanbul or she would have started working on her next thesis chapter while waiting for another plane. Instead, Sutton walked directly from the desk to the restroom, 
where she disappeared from the view of CCTV cameras. Over the next seven minutes, people entered and exited the restroom. Then, three young women walked in together, only to emerge almost immediately in apparent panic. They ran along the transit hall and returned with an airport official. Within minutes, a medical team arrived. So that's also of key interest to me because they're saying that the footage shows her going into the bathroom and seven minutes pass and you have people going in and out of the restroom. Who are those other people? Have they been investigated um, and talked to and interrogated on what they saw in the bathroom one of those people that entered could have murdered her you know the next section of this article says anthony borden was woken on the morning of sunday october 18th by a phone call telling him sutton was dead he dismissed out of hand reports that she had committed suicide i said it's a crime borden remember remembers that was my immediate reaction and i think everybody else felt the same in Canberra, Sutton's friend, Sarah Vancia, had no difficulty believing she had been killed. A lot of people would have hated her, really, really hated her, for what she was doing, Vancia says. She would have had a lot of enemies. Sutton had spoken out strongly against ISIS, and in her jubilation at landing the million dollar grant, had forgotten her plan to stay off Facebook, she posted a message saying her social media project was part of efforts to disrupt the hateful garbage that ISIS is spewing. It seemed to colleague Susan Hutchinson that ISIS wasn't the only suspect. A bunch of people, in quotations, might have liked Sutton silence. There's a very strong history of the Turkish police at the airport being violent and nasty to people who they perceive as being pro-Kurdish, she says. And another friend of hers is quoted as saying, these things can be made to look like suicide, Hutchinson said. So it's very clear that pretty much every single one of her friends and colleagues doesn't believe she would have committed suicide in the first place. But then when you add all this other clearly suspicious stuff around her death it seems very much like there's some sort of cover-up or conspiracy going on here so it's very bizarre very sad and i'm pretty sure yeah that's basically all for what these different articles have to say and all of the research into this that i've done so far just since i woke up today very interesting story and something that i feel like I said, just compelled to share with you all and put it out there. What really happened to Jacqueline and Sutton, perhaps we will never know, but it certainly seems suspicious, um, the circumstances surrounding her death and alleged suicide. I will say personally, I don't believe that she committed suicide. I think she was murdered by one of her many enemies and possibly even people in the government of those countries and areas she was silenced because of her activism now one final thing to this once again to tie it back to my dream the um college she was enrolled in the australian national university and in particular the building where she would have been pursuing her phd is right beside that field with the trees and the creek nearby which completely and perfectly matches with my dream location and another part to that the memorial service that the college held for jackie was in the courtyard of that building which is right in the vicinity of that field in that area so i feel that her spirit definitely came through in my dream and was letting me know that perhaps she still visits at the least or watches over her friends and colleagues that are still you know around that area and one thing i'd be interested to know is is there some sort of 
you know, like memorial installment in the, the courtyard of that research center, would there be some sort of like memorial plaque that's there? Maybe they installed something like a bench or planted a tree or some sort of um, memorial for her. I haven't got that far in the research today, but I'm wondering if there is something there that would draw her to that area, to haunt that area in some regard. Just in closing with this article, it says, for many, Sutton's death remains a puzzle. It still doesn't add up, says Anthony Borden. It will never add up to me. Sebastian Cliche understands Sutton's friend's reluctance to accept that she committed suicide. We had an idea of Jackie that we didn't want to let go of, he says. We saw her as a fearless warrior, essentially, with a heart of gold. Susan Hutchinson will always see her that way. I'm never going to be able to rule out something sinister, she says. And in closing with this, there is a little bit of a conversation with Jenny, which is um, Jacqueline's sister. And it just goes on to say that um, the sister thinks maybe it is possible that she committed suicide. But again, there is a, a sort of a bizarre thing with that. Because she says like um, she believes her sister had accumulated trauma from years of living and working in war zones. That doesn't really make sense if you think about it. Because this woman, Jacqueline Sutton, seems like the type that would just be further motivated by that, by the horrible things that she sees or um, experiences. Um, and her friends seem to agree with that. So it doesn't make sense that that would be something that would cause her to kill herself. And certainly not in an airport during a crossover flight to get back to Iraq. It doesn't seem to add up in any way or any angle that you look at it. So that's basically it for this video. I just wanted to come on and share this story of this woman and my dream and how your dreams can guide you to stories like this and spirits that are perhaps still lingering around because of the scenarios of their death and because of the mystery and quite frankly their story not being truthfully told so i will leave it at that and hopefully you all found this interesting and you know let me know what you think in the comments below do you think that she killed herself or do you think that there is just too much that says otherwise with the circumstances surrounding her death I would like to know your opinion on this and if any family member or any friend or colleague of Jackie happens to watch this video I just want to say I'm sorry for your loss and I understand you know why you all think that she was murdered and I agree and perhaps with my dream revealing all of this to me and getting me to follow this line of research that could be a confirmation to you that her spirit is still around you and she's there so be comforted in that fact and with that i will end this video until next time and blessed be you.